Hello, John. Good to see you. You as well, my dear. How are you? Long time no see. It has been a long time, although we do talk on the phone and we text, but yes, we haven't done a, a podcast in a, a long while. We are leaving everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, um, yeah. What's going on with you? A lot? Wow. That's a loaded question. Uh, well, gee, the whole world is changing. Bricks, Trump, uh, oil, gold, silver is going cataclysmic. I mean, other than that, it's pretty boring. Actually, yeah, silver is shooting up. It was like, what, 31 at the beginning of the week. Now it's up to 34. Almost 35 now. 35, yep. Yep. Yeah, I was on with my gold guy from Swiss America. And because uh, my daughter is purchasing some coins, I'm trying yep. to get my daughters involved in this. Good. And uh, yeah, he said it's it's really going up quick. So, well, tell your female audience I said hello. I know it's been a minute, but uh, couldn't have picked a better time, Denise, for every for us to get together with everything that's going on. So, yeah. How's it, uh, how's it going over in New York with the elections? Well, um, it's, it's hard to feel out these people. You know, like, <clears throat> I want to say that a lot of New York has gone red. I do want to say that. I mean, I, we, we, there's a lot of support for Trump in New York. He's actually coming to Madison Square Garden. I heard. I yes. heard. He's coming on Sunday, and I will be there. And, awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, but one thing that I do want to mention to your viewers in New York, so this is on the New York State election ballot, and it is called, I don't know if you can see that, of course it disappears, there it is. I see it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's uh, Proposal 1, which was, it was originally called the Equal Rights Amendment, and they want to make an amendment to the Constitution, which we really don't need to amend the Constitution because it covers equal rights. But this is very sneakily done mm -hmm. because the way they're wording it, they're actually giving rights to minors to have to, yeah, be mutilated uh, if they're not happy being the gender that they were born. They don't need parental, parental consent. consent. Yeah. <laughs> so they slip that in there. So what they're saying is equal rights and they threw the word age in there. Because, you know, it was, you know, you know, manipulation. Yeah. yeah. So age was stuck in their equal rights. So they're giving children rights to mutilate themselves, basically, without parental consent. They're also want to give illegals rights to vote. Which, what else is new? Yeah. Um, and they can they can take uh, jobs like um, city jobs. They can become police officers or firefighters. These are illegals we're talking about now. Then they want to make sure boys can play in girls' sports. So this is all in this one proposal, and they make it sound so good. I mean, doesn't this sound good? Protection, equal protection, equal rights. Doesn't that sound good? But, you know, New Yorkers, research this. There it is. It keeps disappearing. Research this, and I'm not telling anyone how to vote. I'm just saying I am voting no on proposal one, and most likely on all the proposals, no. Well, thank you for that. And it's funny that you should mention that, Denise, because at the end of this week, I've put together a podcast, sort of a monologue, which I don't normally do. But these are, as you know, abnormal and incredibly important times that we're in, paramount in importance. In fact, I'm actually taking a stand for Christians, the evangelicals, and just believers as a whole, Judeo-Christian, all the different sects of Christianity to get out and vote for President Trump, because roughly... 90 million Americans, which is run one third of the legal population in the U.S., uh, constitute the vote from a faith-based standpoint. And we know what President Trump has done, done to fight for the rights of the unborn, fight for the rights of children, pedophilia, sex trafficking, and for people to have their faith, religious freedoms, and their Second Amendments, of which many Christians fall in that bucket. So I felt it was imperative to take a stand and implore them to vote and don't say that your vote doesn't count. And if you think your vote is rigged, do you think standing tacitly by and giving them consent? Because every non-vote is a vote. Because if you don't vote, doesn't mean that 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 nothing happened. They take that, and they take advantage of that, and they run with it. The ballot stuffing should prove that. So, you know, I've had to take a stand as well. And it's funny here in California, I have seen a lot of Trump flags, believe it or not, in places I thought I wouldn't. And when I lived in New York City, I, I yeah. Are you seeing them in places where four years ago you didn't? Yes. Okay, that's like yes. Yeah. yes, good, good question, actually. Very good question. Yep. Um, and people are less shy about it. 
than they were. They're more vociferous, as they should be, because our backs are against the wall. I was going to say real quick, when I lived in New York City, um, it just depended what part of the city you were in, right? You know, like if you're on the you know, Upper East Side, it seemed to be more conservative. Of course, the West Side was more liberal. And I think in general, the city is more liberal. But it, what seems like like the boroughs, like, you know, Queens and, you know, Brooklyn, a lot of conservative factions, Staten Island, obviously. Big, and big of course, you know, upstate New York. Yeah. We, we yeah. call Staten Island, we call it Trump country. <clears throat> totally, totally. Because yeah. you have a lot of families. So I think there's this big prominent misconception and that the blue states that it's hopelessly blue. And, and I'm just here to tell people that while that is there is that faction, I think the country by and large is a lot more red than people realize concurrently across the board. I agree with that. And and we know we can't look at those polls that they're coming out with. We no. know, yeah, you know what? Those poll numbers remind me of the COVID numbers. Yeah. Do you remember all those? And for those that don't know, Sadly, yes. the numbers weren't people that had it. The numbers were people that were taking the COVID tests. Right. Every test that was taken, every they considered that a case. And then the numbers would go up. A ton of false positives. So yeah. that's how I look at the poll numbers. That's a good analogy. No, I think that's absolutely right. Well, I know you're pressed for time and you're a busy gal and popular, so I don't want to waste your time, although I do enjoy no, talking no, to you. So no, this is good. This shall, is we good. Jump, shall we jump into my presentation I have to show you? Now, before we do that, can, yes. um, can I bring up the fact that yes, I saw your face in the one of the strange things? <laughs> I saw it on a silver coin. What's up with that, John? <laughs> yeah, I know. And I got some, I feel like Ricky got, some, Ricky, you got some explaining to do. Um, that was the worst <laughs> impression. I'm sorry. My impressions of Latinos are not on today. I'll try harder, I promise. Um, <laughs> Hey, I tell you, uh, here we go. You got me going now. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm dodging the question. No, uh, Chris, our, our, our channel owner, came to me a few weeks ago and made a suggestion um, because Nick has a coin and said, you know, hey, what do you think of this idea? And I said, you know, my first inclination is I'm not really comfortable with that. I don't really, I'm not, that's not my style. You know, I'm just, I'm more... I'd like to think more modest than that and as a Christian I'm supposed to be. And, and I, I just, I'm not about self-promotion, right? I mean, it took a lot, you've known me a while. It took a lot to do this channel as it is, to step out of my comfort zone. But when you say yes to God and you're obedient, God, things happen. And so I kind of look at this the same way. So I said, I need to pray about it. First things first. <clears throat> I, I sat a several days, <clears throat> I sat several days with it. And I thought about it. I'm like, God, should I do this? Should I not do this? What do you think? You know, and there were three thoughts that kind of came to mind. One of which is this would be a great way to commemorate this wealth transfer season for God's people that we will never see again, certainly in our lifetime, probably for thousands of years from now. Uh, because you got to remember, this is the first wealth transfer like this since the days of Joseph in Egypt and Israel. And this is global. This isn't just regional. I think everybody knows that, generally speaking. So I thought that's a way to commemorate this season for the audiences. Two, um, and most importantly, was this was probably the heaviest factor in my decision to do this was, it's a way to be proactive and, and be solution-oriented and give back. Your audience, my audience, we have a certain faction of great seasoned citizen people, you know, elderly and people who have disability, special needs that limit the amount of income they can do and so on and so forth. Um, and I have an update about that at the end about med beds, but we'll save that to the end. Very good news there. Um, and so I said, well, let's let's take this and make something good out of it. Let's use it, you know, for good, for a solution. So what we agreed to do is we minted 100 limited edition of coins with my, unfortunately, my mug on it. But yeah, what, <laughs> thank you. What people can do is if they don't need it for themselves, but they want to help somebody else, they can, it's called a humanitarian purchase, I call it a kingdom purchase, pay semantics, forward. pay it forward. Thank you. Nice. I'm, I'm rambling. Yeah, pay it forward. And so somebody can buy it for somebody in need. I'm personally going to get from Chris somewhere between five and 10 coins for myself. I'm going to be giving away about six of them. And I'm concentrating on people in the most need. So I've said to my audience, if there's anybody who fits that aforementioned criteria, please, you know, just write your testimony so I can, you know, read it and pray about it. Right. And people have come forward. And if that's not saying we're not going to help other people, but then the people who want to buy a coin will get registered automatically into a draw, into a, what do they call it, a raffle or a drawing. And we'll just put everybody's name in a hat and pick at random. So it's fair as much as we can. 
Um, so there's no favoritism. And so everybody who buys a coin will get registered in the raffle to win one. Um, and, and that's in addition to the ones that I'm going to be giving away on my own. And then the third thought I had, as I told you, is when I have my kids, guardians, um, when they say, you know, hey, dad, what did you, you know, five, 10 years down the road, whatever, when they say, dad, what did you do during this critical time in history? Well, I can tell them, I can show them videos, but if I'm bequeathing gold and silver to them anyway, what better way to commemorate an example? And the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, children, children. Yes. So I'm thinking, you know, larger picture down the road and how this coin can serve the greatest amount of people. So that's why we've agreed to do this. I think that's great. Thanks. Very nice. That I makes didn't sense? Even know that. I didn't even know that there were companies that do that. So yeah. It's great. Well, I mean, Denise, this, like I said, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just that this was the furthest thought from my mind. I hadn't even, I was, I'm been thinking about the information. I didn't, Chris is a marketing genius. That's what he does. I stay in my, my little window and he stays in his and he's really good at it. And it, you know, and again, I just, if there was a way to help the people, that's what it's about. And, and the profits, as much as people might think are so little after the buying of the silver, the minting fees, the processing fees, the shipping handling, we're not getting, I'm not seeing a dime off this. We're not getting rich off this. This is any profits will just go to channel to keep the upkeep. Yeah, I, you, I, you, I don't see it that way at all. And I don't think people will see it that way. I think we might make 10, 15 bucks at the most. We're not going to get rich off this. And I didn't do this channel to get rich. That's, all right, not, is <laughs> I know anyway. So it's look, I mean, but that's, that was to your question, the impetus to do it mm -hmm. is, is the only thing. So yeah. No, We'll leave that in the description if somebody wants to go check that out when they can see that later. Yep. There you go. All right. You ready okay. to go? Yes. Okay. Let me uh, cue this up and I will share this with you. Let me know when you can see it. Okay. I do. All right. So this is a presentation mostly I did yesterday on Nick's show, as you can see. So you have to forgive the, the shoddy image of me in there. Um, wish you were in there. It'd be a better picture. But what we did is we annotated some of the information to be more, and this was yesterday, and we amended a few slides to be current for today. And I would like to give full credit to somebody I introduced you to today, Judy J. Fabulous woman, great sister, love her very much. One of the most humble people I've met, one of our great team members. Everybody kind of knows her for these presentations and always willing to be in service. She does a lot of meals on wheels for the elder where she lives. She's always, every time I talk, she's always talking about what she can do for other people. So we really appreciate her efforts here as well. So God brought you a good team. Fantastic. I mean, look at the people God has put in our path to me. So you talk about favor, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's deserved, but favor nonetheless. Um, so this is uh, October 2024 with you, Denise Boland. Uh, we're titling How do this. You see it, John, because I see it with the words cut off on the left. Is that just the way I'm feeling? Uh, I can uh, see if I can um, minimize the browser. Minim well, I can I can do a, a smaller font on there let's see if i mean if you're not seeing it like that i see it is that better oh, I, I, yep. I took it down from 100 percent to make it framed a little bit so thank you for that so this is um october this year 2024 we're calling it bricks the final countdown so today we have the bricks going on but from now till thursday as you probably know and of course be watching the signs stay faith-based and prepared and becoming your own central bank as we've talked about will help you to do that so this is the news of interest. Um, a couple of days ago, we had uh, Beirut was hit and it was hit again this morning. Another financial institution was hit. Lots of riots and fires going on. This is Israel's coordinated effort in Hezbollah. They're cleaning up in Lebanon and then they're gonna be going next after uh, the Iran's secret nuclear power plants and missiles per Kim Clement, we've talked about many times before. Now you can see it, it's unmistakable. Uh, you see Trump here mentioned on a Fox show that uh, he mentions the word 17, the letter 17, several times. He owns 17 companies. Uh, he's talking about military base swarmed for 17 days. He's giving you a lot of comms about that to let you know that he's in full control of the situation. Here we have in the Iranian military, we have uh, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey, who's actually working behind the scenes with uh, Netanyahu or whichever version this is in Tel Aviv. So it may look like they're adversaries, but behind the scenes, they're quite friendly. And uh, definitely Turkey is a big advocate and proponent of said BRICS. Uh, as you can see here, Putin has a very strong relationship with Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, no real surprise there as UAE was one of the first ones to join the BRICS. 
And, uh, and then you can see, of course, we talked about Israel ready to strike Iran. Now, what's interesting, right. Denise, I sent this to you, I think, a couple of days ago, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, somebody in the, the deep state White House leaked that Israel was planning to attack Iran on the 16th, which was last week. And so that delayed their plans a little bit. What we believe is going to happen is that right now we have BRICS going on, as I mentioned. Meanwhile, we have in Iraq, which is probably the segue for the next slide. Perfect. We have um, Mugadashi, who is a um, Iraqi, um, Iraqi citizen, not a corrupt Iranian proxy in the government who is going to be appointed as the new Speaker of the House, just like we had earlier this year with Johnson as the Speaker of the House. You cannot have a country without a speaker and come back to the stage internationally for a tradable currency. So this is part of the protocol to do that. So you see Iraq has increased its reserves at the IMF, which is crumbling in front of us by 50%. Iraq is the ninth largest gold buyer in the world, 30th roughly in reserves. Uh, last week, they opened two embassies one in uh, Dublin and one in Zagreb. So that's pretty significant. That's a clear telltale that they're getting ready to come back to the international stage. Um, you, you see finance uh, deposits in more than 77 billion in non-oil revenues. That's good because they've been living off of oil to this point as a country diversifies its assets like BRICS is doing in real-time settlements, something real for something real. You have to now nationalize that currency and live off the complete fruits of it. So. We know Iraq has oil, silver, gold, diamonds, uh, phosphorus, and many, many other things to bring to the table. Okay, so we were talking about the aforementioned Mugadashi. We're, we're expecting or anticipating by tomorrow they're going to point him in. Once they do, they've just worked with the Kurdish bloc that we found as of today, which had the Democratic Party apparently has one two-thirds of the majority vote needed uh, to get into parliament, to select him. And then they're going to work to pass that oil and gas law, HCL uh, Article 140, the HCL gas law everybody knows about, or should. And <clears throat> once they do that, we expect Maliki to reel his ugly head like a whack-a-mole. And that's when we think this is going to happen right here. If you notice, courtesy of Currency365, he's talked about every time that Bitcoin rises, you start to see events happening. So you know the world is largely staged, right? And you come here to this article. They're going to plan uh, to attack Iran. This is even CNN leaking it. Now, you know, if the mainstream fake news is leaking it, it's not really World War III because you would never normally telegraph your moves to your enemy, which just tells you it's a narrative. And the attacks include, as you can see in the bullet points, missile launchers and drones, missile and, and drone strategy sites, military bases, nuclear research laboratories, places that typically you would have the least amount of human collateral damage of as opposed to out in front in the open of society. Um, you've got here the oil refineries that were hit last week in Iran. We talked about gold before. Uh, they have a voracious appetite as they should. They have a ton of it over there. Uh, then see. we can go to the next one here. So, so that, that kind of encapsulates the majority of what's going on with Iraq. We're just waiting for the events of this week to take place that I mentioned. Okay. And then we will see, uh, we believe that um, Israel is going to do their strike anywhere between the end of this week into the election of President Trump. So I have a question for you. Sure, so the, the screen before this, they actually announced it on CNN. Yep, they did. Seriously. Yeah, two weeks. It was a two or three weeks ago. Prime Minister Bennett came out on CNN and actually announced that they, because they've been hitting Hezbollah and Hamas, that Iran is so vulnerable. This is the time to do it. Wow. You okay. even have President Trump saying we should hit Iran. Now we know he does reverse psychology because he also said, "Oh, oh, don't, don't uh, de-dollarize that bricks, or we're going to hit tariffs." They don't care. It's not going to affect them. He's he's part of it. He he helped orchestrate bricks. He's now got Putin running the show where he was until he comes back optically. So again, moves and counter moves. You see. And I just want to raise a point for sure. for anyone that's watching that's undecided because there are people that are undecided who they're going to vote for but it is so obvious that biden harris we know the left they're anti-semites they're 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 telling israel not to target not to not you know they're trying to hold, hold their arms behind their back they're mm. funding iran they're, 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 the money that they're going to to the gaza is is in the hands of hamas and then the last, the, just what is it, a few days ago at the rally, someone says, Jesus is Lord. 
And Harris says you're at the wrong rally. Right. So it is so obvious they're anti-Jew and they're anti-Christian. So people need to see that. Well, they're, they're, you're actually right. They're the cabal. And this is Trump is allowing the, the Trump and the Patriots are allowing this so people can see it. To your point, Denise, I think right to the end, people are going to end up voting for him at the last minute. And I think they're because it's a wake up operation. They want to try to get as many people as they can in to reduce the collateral damage, because as we know, <clears throat> somewhere between and I'm just being conservative of the estimates, somewhere between, I don't know, 10 and 20 percent of the population will never get it. Um, but if you can get the majority, that's obviously the goal. So, yeah. But yeah, good point. Um, I mean, that's both mostly encapsulates what we believe Iraq is now. Vietnam, I know everybody likes to see that. We're really waiting for the sequence of events. Chi came out, I think, the other day and said his country is prepped and ready for war. Again, if you were really doing that, you wouldn't talk about it, right? So you have to read between the lines. He's telling you that they're getting ready for Putin to end the Ukraine nonsense. He's already won Ukraine, obviously. Again, I'll say this again for posterity, Denise, for the people in the, the cheap seats that Donbass and Lugansk are Russian provinces. Those are Russian nationalists. They speak Russian. Uh, Putin has been in there for at least the last two years that I'm aware of, thanks to PIR's Intel, Patriot Intel Report Phoenix, has uh, copiously posted videos that I put on our telegram showing that he's been feeding and clothing those people, build, rebuilding um, condos and apartment complexes from the war-torn regions against the Azov Battalion, which are complete Nazis, by the way, skinheads. And so he's really doing his part to uh, effectuate health there. But he's going to do the knockout punch there and end that nonsense. And then he's going to go right in with G on the Republic side and do a one or two day invasion. And that will break uh, Vietnam enough out of communism, not completely, but enough to free up the dong, which is powered in silver and oil and Litecoin and gold and many other reserves. So. So this is just a, a visual article for people to see right here on Inside Paper. There's the link if you want to click on it and further investigate. Uh, next slide is Zimbabwe. Very interesting place that we're at with them. Chimisa, we know he's working with Elon Musk, and we know that because Elon Musk mentioned last month that Starlink is in Zimbabwe. Yeah. But if, Denise, let me ask you a question. If, um, if Elon is working with Chimisa, who else might be working with them? Trump. Exactly. Exactly. And I'll show you why. BRICS is offering Zimbabwe away out of the IMF. Guess what? Zimbabwe is already part of BRICS. Look what he's talking about. Title deeds for new farmers. Who else talks about farmers, Denise? Trump. Exactly. Oh, yeah. In a negative way, I was going to say Gates, because he wants wow. to take over all the farmlands. But... He just lost a major case, speaking of him, mm -hmm. where, where all of his misgivings are coming out. I think they dealt with the real one a long time ago, but again, that's, yeah. Well, anyway, but yeah, all of that's unraveling on them. People think they're going to get the land grab. They ain't going to get it. It's, it's going to go to the farmers. Uh, so you see Chamisa talking about that. He wears gold ties. He just made last month 20 promises he's going to do when in office. Who's that sound like? Trump. So everybody thinks that the elections happen and Mangawa has won. He has not. He is corrupt and he will be summarily removed, just like the corruption here in America, just like in Iraq. They all copy each other. We'll go right down the line like a series of dominoes or a stack of pancakes. He's, he's going to get put back in. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets put back in right around the time that Trump's back in. Just saying. So this is the $100 trillion note. And again, folks, I know there's a lot of information out there, folks, going on about you know, the Zim is only for humanitarian projects. In the nicest way that I can say that, that's just not true, okay? If you bought the currency, you own it. It says it right here. Payable to the bearer of note on demand. Denise, when you bought your house, did the bank tell you what you could do with it, what, how, what rooms you could live in and when you could be in those rooms? When you go to the grocery store to buy food, did they tell you what you can cook with it and how much you can have of it? So how, how is this any different? Yeah, there are groups out there that are saying, yeah, the, the money will be dispersed according to no. your humanitarian plan. And you, you have to sit down with somebody and discuss what your plans are to do with the money. And Yeah, it's nonsense. Do you really think that I've actually met, unlike these people, I've met with the, the private bankers and the wealth managers, and I've asked them this question. They look at me in the same way I'm looking at you, like incredulously. Like, do, do you really think most people with no disrespect 
most people are equipped to write a business plan or an executive summary or prospectus or even know the differences? No, and they shouldn't. It's an exchange. It's just an exchange. You bought the currency, you bought the bonds, you own it. Who the heck is man to tell you what you get to do with the money that comes from God? Only God can tell you that. So they don't have a right. That's, that's like going from one poverty mindset to another. When I hear that, that tells me that person has not changed their mindset yet to receive wealth. They're, they're still in a fear-based poverty mode, and they're not even contending close to the hundredfold. See, we as Christians, Denise, are kings and queens, right? That's what yes. the Bible says. Absolutely. Do kings and queens live in squalor? No, they don't. Now, is money your God? No. And money no. is not the root of all evil, folks. That's legalistic nonsense. Anything that's an idol over God, your job, your kids, your home, your car, your title, your possessions, your jewelry, your whatever, that is an idol over God is evil. Money in and of itself is not. Most people may have forgotten that salary, the word salary derives from salt. That's what he used to pay you back in the day. So money is made by God. Haggai 2.8, the gold and silver of mine, says the Lord. It's biblical. It's what you do with it. It's the heart behind it and how it's used that matters. Discussing okay? the balance. Remember, we were talking about this. Yep. The so well, of the, if you want, if you want to share that, you were good at explaining it. The say that one more time. The parable of the... Uh, the, the talents, the three men that were given talents. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically Matthew 25. We were reading, I think it starts at verse 13, where Jesus came and he, he met with three men and he gave each of them <clears throat> a bit of money. And he said, uh, I'll come back in a time and see what you do with it. And the, I think the first man had, I think, 10 talents or something like that. And, and he used all of his talents. And, you know, and then the second guy came, he had, I think, five talents or maybe reverse that. But you guys get the idea. And he, he said, okay. And he, and then he gave the guy with one talent, the third guy. And he said, I'll, I'll come back and see what you do. And predictably the first two guys said, you know, Hey, I used these talents. This is what I did. This is how I, you know, I grew it. I did this, I invested, blah, blah, blah. She's like, great. Now I'm going to double your talents and multiply them. Gets to the third guy. And he said, what'd you do? He said, well, I, I was fearing somebody stole it. So I put it and buried it into the ground to protect it. Here it is. And Jesus is like, you fool. I could have at least got interest out of the bank more than putting in the ground Absolutely. and he took his talent and gave it to the other guys but what i told you yesterday what's worse is he cast them off to weeping and gnashing of teeth right so we don't play with god when he tells us to do something we better do it so the zim is absolutely the got the most amount of gold in the world undisputed above and below ground the payout is going to be a managed payout over a seven-year period much like if you got a lottery they don't give you a lump sum they give it well in a lottery to give you a lump sum or you can take it as a managed payout. In this case, because of the sheer size and veracity of the Zim and what it entails with respect to gold, they're going to give you, I believe, what I've been told the last, the last we checked was seven years to pay it out. That's how vast it is. So it's not a humanitarian fund. Let's, let's just you know, cut to the chase. Are there humanitarian funds? Yes. 90% of them are not legit. There's only a small percentage. You don't need it. You are your own humanitarian fund by virtue of owning the currency. No one can tell you what to do with your money except God who created it, period. Nothing more be, need be said about that. So I will uh, I'll digress and move along. Uh, Venezuela, because everyone wants to always hear about the Boulevard. Um, they had a blackout the other day, which was concocted by this clown, Maduro. They're going to be getting him out sooner than later. I'm sure of it. Um, again, Venezuela is one of the fourth wealthiest countries in the world in terms of oil, gold reserves. Where a country was, well, they will, they will henceforth return back to in prominence. History always dictates that. We believe that next year, not this year, next year, when Juan Guaido gets in and secedes this knucklehead, then you're going to see Venezuela prosper again with the Boulevard. And that's, it's very exciting. So it's a great, it's a great investment to have amongst the many. And I just want to add that their crime rate went down about 70% because they emptied their jails and their insane asylums. And yeah. Here. But the, the good news is, Denise, is that there's nowhere to go but up. So as we reverse the tidal wave process, it puts them in a really, really good place. I mean, look at El Salvador, what Naib Bukele is doing over there. He's killing it. 92% uh, crime reduction. They have, but a lot of people don't know, they have a lot of nuclear fission and other naturally occurring elements that are powerful within their ground. So that's a country to watch out for as well, just saying. 
So we will move forward. Uh, this, again, this was taken last night. So um, people, you know, adjust the prices accordingly. The good news is it's even up from when we took it. It's uh, silver's almost at $35. Yeah. Gold, I'd have to go look at it. Let me see if I can uh, do a quick check, folks. Okay, here we go. Silver's at 3506. Yep. Uh, Brent crude 7560. Gold 276310. Those are all time historic highs, folks. So get gold and silver. Not even my opinion. You could just see it. It's just going to, all the subject matter experts, you know, Denise, I talked to, wherever they stand on the currency, they all agree <laughs> that you must do that. It's going to become a runaway train. Now, what's exciting with the cryptos is XRP and XDC are on the scalable bridge. Uh, they will, you know, XRP and gold, XDC and silver and XLM and copper, like we talked about years ago. Uh, let me pull up to this article. You can see it. Grayscale files to convert SOL. Sorry. Silver is affordable. Right now it is. Yeah. Right now it is, but it's going to get out of reach next year. Right. Um, XRP, AVAX trust. So XRP has created their own ETF. So even though they're still dealing with the SEC, they're working with BRICS and going right around it and they're building you know, uh, inroads for the new quantum financial system. It's all going to be done on the XRP blockchain, ISO 20022, on the digital edge technology, Embridge. I'm saying that for the crypto geeks in the room that know that verbiage. I'm sure you have some of those. Uh, so, you know, everything is pointing, you know, our way that we are going back to an asset-backed economy, right? BRICS is doing Denise real-time settlements, something real for something real, like we used to do, which is going to put great pressure on the U.S., which I'll tell you, as I think you know, I think Trump is going to put Judy Shelton in there next year in the first quarter, like he did in his last term to test. That time he was testing it. Now with a clean House and Senate with no gunk nonsense in his way, no Washington lobbyists and do-gooders in the way, he'll really be able to kick some butt. And he's going to put Judy Shelton in there. And I guarantee you, she's going to audit the Fed. Hasn't been done since 1956. They're going to find that a lot of the gold is not at Fort Knox. It's in many other places. And uh, that uh, when he talks about liquid gold under our feet, he's not just talking about oil, he's talking about gold as well. It's a double entendre, just for posterity. So we've got it. And he's going, gold stabilizes the economy. There's more gold in the world than there is silver. So there's a run on silver because as I mentioned last time, it precipitates the, the uh, manufacturing, right? It's in your watches, it's in, uh, it's in your, you know, if you can see it, your phone, your, your computer monitors, your chips in your car. I mean, it's in the, the colloidal silver and the, it's in everything. So our that teeth. means, that, go ahead. It's some your of our teeth. teeth. Your teeth, yep, yep, your, your amalgams. That's also platinum and palladium, by the way, too. So yeah, it's a mixture. So it, it, it's, you know, some people believe that silver well paste gold. I, I could see an argument for that. I think they're going to kind of, I mean, you know, gold will always be more expensive, but not by much. And silver will continue to catch it, especially as we run out of it. Because, you know, so many countries are, the central banks are buying it up left and right in the people, as they should. I mean, Costco, if you've gone lately, is buying, is selling gold and silver and now platinum. Oh, really? Yeah. You know yeah. That. Yeah. Check it out next time you get it. I was here in the LA area and I saw, I was like, huh, I'll be, I'll be a going to go get some uh, Diddy baby oil. I was going to go get like, oh, jeez. By the way, you can't get, you can't yeah. get baby oil at Costco. That, that took a left turn. Yikes. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'm not even going to touch that one. Um, this is again, just a reminder for those who are new in, in the movement, BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, which we just talked about. And uh, you can see the summit here. And of course, Xi Jinping, and you can see BRICS. Yes, includes the Vietnamese dong. Some of this is older. It's just for kind of, you know, reframing uh, from past to present so people can see how it's evolved. Uh, this is a, an important slide here, Denise, for you and your audience, respectively. This is the people that are actually at the BRICS this week, um, roughly 45 to 50 percent of the population. And you can see uh, the earth population, GDP, wheat harvesting, et cetera. Um, and it's important to denote, here's the- How many countries number. now? I'm sorry? How many countries are, are involved? Uh, well, there's 51 in, 50 to 60 roughly, but 100 and I think it's 160 or 170 will be in total when this thing is done next year. And that will be uh, well over, uh, 
85 to 90 percent of the world's population represented. So th this is the important block that sets the tone for everyone else. Everyone else will jump on as they de-dollarize. It's just a question of whether they're going to make an announcement on Thursday or they're just going to do it. We could see an argument for them not saying anything and just doing it because in your stomping ground in New York on Dag Hammarskjöld, they had the uh, UN General Assembly last month and you had all these countries individually saying peace, prosperity, nationalism, right? A sense of unification. That's what you want to hear when you're looking for a global reset. So I'm just leaving this up for a minute so people can kind of <clears throat> absorb it. Okay, then we move on and we are at the end and we'll get your, your thoughts on this, Denise. And again, we are praying over Israel, the true Jews of Israel, of course, uh, God's chosen people and that uh, America would defend and protect them again. And we honor the late, great Kim Clement where he talked about a suddenly why, why now moment, a uh, break in the Middle East with the wealth transfer. And he also said, among other things, God is dissatisfied with the government of America. He's going to shake the Democrats and the Republicans even more. He also said, as you know, that President Trump, April 7th, 2007, he said that God was going to put a non-praying man into the highest seat in the land and make him a hot-blooded man, a praying man. And, and to the undecided voters, if you look at the delta to where Trump was in 2016 to now, you should see, if you're really paying attention, a clear and inherent difference in this man's character. Yes, he's a little ostentatious. Yes, he's a little bit showy. And he's a New Yorker. That just, no offense, that comes with the territory when you live in New York. You have to do things bigger and louder in New York having lived there. That's just part of the, it's a lot of competition. But he's also a family man. He's integrable. He keeps his promises. He restored Jerusalem as the capital, which many other politicians talked about, but never did. He did. Um, so he's really lived up to what he said. And also, Denise, I think we were talking about this on Mahoney show earlier today. When you saw him on Sunday in Pennsylvania, McDonald's with the fries, two things about that. He's calling out McDonald's for a lot of the pedophilia that they've been doing along with Wendy's and many other fast food chains. But he's also showing you Nasara because he's going to be, I have a video I'm gonna show you real quick at the end of this. He's going to be giving the people monies back as like the fries. It's like he said, it's on me, it's on me. I think Nasara is gonna precipitate much of that. And of course, my favorite verse, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not yet seen. Okay, back to you. Well, so uh, one of the things that I took away from that, I don't know if anybody else did, I might be just like in the 1%, but golden arches, gold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good point. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. It was very subtle, but you're right. Yeah, so that kind of, yeah, that makes the point. And um, I, his humility, I, my goodness. It what was that? It showed his humility. In many ways, yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's I mean, you you know New York. I think I, here in California, he's got a golf course not too far from me. And I've, uh, somebody took me out to dinner there a long time ago. And, and I, I, I talked to the general manager. I said, hey, can I ask you a question? She's like, sure. I'm like, what do you guys really think of him? I said, oh, he's great. I said, is he really good to work for? Oh, yeah, no, he takes good care of us. He pays us bonuses. He always looks out. He, when he's here, he asks how we're doing. He checks up on us. He comes down in the basement, the clubhouse and where the people eat and he checks on us. So all the people I've talked to have glowing things to say about him. Is that your impression over there as well? Yeah. In fact, um, Mel Kay used to work for him and she That's right. said all these good things about, yeah. Like even they said, oh, he's a racist. Okay. He's a racist, but he had he had black people working for him. He had Jewish people working for him. Of course. There was one story where uh, one of his black employees was struggling, not able to pay his rent, and Trump paid his rent. You know, so yeah. you don't hear these stories. You know, not. and I like that now they're showing him at the rallies with his grandchildren. You know, because people need to see him as a person, mm -hmm. not just a political figure. Well, Denise, look what he did for the veterans. Remember a couple of years ago when they were homeless, he put them up in his hotel. You know, so, I mean, it's, the signs are there if you're really, you know, if you're really trying to get to the, to the truth of the matter, you'll see it. What I have heard, Denise, with, with Nasara is, you know, we've talked about this for years, you know, we've confiscated all the wealth from the Vatican and Parliament and DC and all these corrupt reptilian swamp holes and all that gold. There's so much, people have been brainwashed, like she said, and inculcated to believe that they're supposed to live in lack and squalor. Social security it's not, nope. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you want to, you want to get a book that's going to give you a, 
uh, a deep dive in finances and give you a headache. This one here, Greg Manorino recommended to me, full disclosure. Creature of Jekyll Island, 600 pages. This is like war and peace for finances. I know this stuff and it still gave me a headache. I mean, it all goes back to 1912. It, there were six men, six, cabal number six, three, six, 13, 23, 33. Yeah, Little that was important to that. Watch those numbers, threes. Four of those men were with J.P. Morgan. Two of them were the Rothschilds. Little hint, one in the same blood reptilian bloodline, blue bloodline family. It's, it, they're all in cahoots. That's why I will never do business with that bank. I'll trust them as far as I could throw them. And so it's just disgusting what they did. They, it, it, a simple financial term for everybody. Well, not simple. I'll make it simple. Fractional reserve banking. Layman's terms, get a dollar or five dollars, whatever, from the bank. Back in those days, it was supposed to be one for one. If you got a dollar pre pre Nixon, right, and even pre nineteen thirty three, when they tried to confiscate our gold for some nonsensical purpose that we were going to run out of currency, right? How's that worked out? Uh, you, people were under the assumption, like the woman said, they took advantage of our gentle, kind, trusting nature. People assumed back then my grandparents, that, hey, if I get a dollar bill from the U.S., uh, it's gold backed 100%. Mm -mm. Fractional reserve means they water down the gold reserves against that dollar, and now it's really like 54%, then 48%. It's like having your phone thinking it's 100% charge, and you look over and it's 75%, 50%. It's dropping moment by moment, and that's what they've doing. The more that you print currency, which is nothing more, the dollar is nothing more than, in a, than a, a debt instrument. And inflation is nothing more than a tax. And you know that because when everyday people, good people, like on your channel, go to the grocery store, the gas station, the, the mall, if you can find one, or Walmart or Co wherever you go, it's costing more of those paper dollars to buy the same stuff. Are you getting more of it? Better quality? No. So that means that that instrument is dropping in value. Hint, it doesn't have any to begin with. It's probably worth about 2.3 cents right now to the dollar. So, and, and, and so in November, I, I got to be honest, that's what we do here. After President Trump wins, um, don't think all the problems are solved because the Fed is going to come out on November 7th and drop the interest rates another quarter point. They're going to do it again in December during the holidays, which we're in the holidays now. And so you'll have a complete... 1% basis point in one quarter. It's almost unprecedented. That's a panic move. That means that you're going to see a dollar index drop, which means you're going to have hyperinflation. So Bill Holter, a guy I interview a lot who knows this stuff is, he put it in the, the best terms. He said, you're going to have hyperinflation, Denise, of the things that you need, your food, your household items, you know, whatever, and hyperdeflation of the things you have, meaning your cars, your homes. So you're going to see real estate dropping like a rock. You look at the repo market with cars right now. You have a glut of cars and nobody to buy them because did you see last week? It's unbelievable. You had Boeing laid off 17, 17, go again. Boeing laid off 17,000 people. Walgreens is closing 1,200 locations over the next couple of years in addition to the ones they've already closed. There's, the tech industry has lost over 130,000 jobs, and we still have a couple months left. So you're going to see a hyper speed up after he wins of these things. So this is not to scare people. Just be prepared. If you have one ounce of silver, that's how important this is. We'll feed and clothe your family for an entire month. If you get enough junk silver, you can use that to barter. What we recommend, again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not constituted financial advice which is good information for people to use on their own discernmental ability. But use your cash first. If and when that runs out, then turn to junk silver. That should run out, turn to the silver coins. But hold off on your gold at all costs, because in the near future, we're going to have a bumpy road from, uh, from October this year till about May of next year, as he vamps us up to the process of, remember he said, Memorial Day next year till 4th of July 26, we're going to have a, a celebration. And that's part of the Jubilee period, right? That doesn't mean we're waiting folks till May to see Nasara. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that be on the right side of history, be on that 1% that we're in and, and be prepared. You don't need a ton of currencies. You don't need a ton of metals. If you just have a little, Jesus will multiply it into a lot. If he can trust you, sky's the limit. 
Absolutely. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you for that. And um, yeah, excellent advice. Thanks. And we are looking forward to how many how many days left? Three weeks. What's today? Twenty second. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine. Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Might even be sooner. We'll see. You know. Yeah. Why do you think that? Well, I mean, there's talk about, you know, the military coming in and preemptively stopping it because they already see Georgia and Pennsylvania. They're trying to rig those elections already. And uh, we know Starlink's catching it. Uh, military could, well, X-22 actually said that that there's potentiality of the military possibly coming in and redoing the elections in one day with paper ballots. Hmm. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying no, it's possible. That would be something. It'd be interesting. I mean, we're going to see things that we didn't expect to see is what I'm getting at. You know, but remember what Kim Clement said, <clears throat> when things seem at their worst, he's going to free his people. That's and right. I want to add one more thing, Denise, this is important, if I may, to those of you who are concerned about what I just shared, I'm going to remind you what we said with Denise, however many months ago we did this. The godly people like Denise and I, imperfect, but godly, have every intentionality of blessing you with what we come into, ergo feeding the poor, the lonely, the hungry, the needy, the widows, the orphans. This is my desire, says the Lord per Kim Clement. So there's going to be a lot of Christians that step in in this new season that are blessed and help those of you who are unable to give yourselves a leg up, including this coin raffle thing is another kind of creative way to, to help achieve that. So you don't need to panic. You, you know, you're not forgotten. You're important. You're loved. And um, help is on the way from God. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. This was amazing. Thank you. So Likewise. I learned more than I knew before I got on. Thank you for sharing. Well, then we did our job. <laughs> um, if people are looking to get currencies or bonds or Zim, um, Dinar, Dong, you know, all the usual stuff, we will leave that link in the description. We also, have, also like Denise has, we have a great relationship with a precious metals dealer. If you're looking to get it or add to the cache or get the coin, we'll also leave that as well. Just go into the title where it says more, click on that where it says hyperlink black more, click on that. All the links will come out for you to uh, just do your research and make the best decisions that you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Last words from you. Yeah. If anybody wants to uh, check out my podcast, I'm on rumble.com forward slash Denise. And you can also find me on YouTube. Are they still allowing you on YouTube these days? Yeah, I just only put my entertainment stuff. Like I'm oh, going to have uh, Pat Boone is coming on next week and Susan Olson, little Cindy Brady from the Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to catch those interviews, yeah, they'll they'll be on YouTube and Rumble. She was one of my favorite Brady Bunch people as a kid. So tell her I'm a fan. I will tell her. I, I will. will. Tell her. She just she just walked away with Brandon Strzokas. She joined the walk. Away. Oh, yeah, I had heard that. Yeah. 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 So it's going to be a great conversation. Can't wait to hear that. Well. Yeah. Hopefully I'll see you again next month on the aftermath of all this and we'll, Absolutely. we'll get to get, get God, God's people to the finish line and win. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you, for having John. me, Denise. I appreciate it. God bless you. God bless.